Hi everyone, how are you doing today? Uh, uh, today I am with an amazing, 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 amazing human being. His name is Todd Ball, and he is the founder of the Free uh, Small Library Project. And his goal is to have 25 million small libraries around the world. And so far, he has almost 75,000 small libraries around the world. And um, what we are here today to talk about is to see how uh, we can scale this and make this happen so that uh, there is more uh, global literacy around the world. There is more lead reading culture. And um, my understanding is that Todd wants to uh, scale and divert diverse a little bit and use his knowledge and network to do more uh, towards the uh, the literacy work on the planet am i am i understanding it correctly doc yeah absolutely absolutely and uh, um i was just in the uh, in the philippines in a rural village that had no uh, electricity no running water their huts they had about 420 people they were an indigenous people and 25% uh, of their population could read and they had no school. Um, a couple months ago, I was in Cleveland where 75% uh, of the population reads below, the adult population reads below the minimum reading standards. And so both of that equation in the Philippines and the US were similar in that 25% that of the populace was really good readers and and really what their job in our mind is is to help the 75 percent of the population that can't read read and so what we've done is we've set up a series of little free libraries uh throughout the united states and the world there's almost 75,000 of them and our feelings are strongly that if we had one little library per 300 people there would be 25.4 million little free libraries and a little free library can be constructed from uh, any kind of wood, uh, recycled materials, you know, any kind of box that you can make that could you put out your front door uh, can be a little free library. And if you go on our website at littlefreelibrary.org, you'll see almost 50,000 photos from around the world of what people have done to make little free libraries. And um, I encourage your listeners to, uh, viewers i guess to check it out and uh one of the things we were talking about is um how do we create local local materials local goods for people around the world and i was talking about uh, a project we're working on one i was talking about we have a project called the uh, mobile library which is a part of our kids community and cop program and the mobile library is a, a fold-up library has a little sign on it, Little Free Library, we share books. And uh, we put them in the back of police cars across the United States. And uh, there's a sign, on the a sign on the police car that says, we share books. And the police hand out books to kids across the, the country and so on. And that's one of the things that we're doing to expand it. But also, uh, we started talking to you about, we're working on a project to create more and more local content in more and more libraries. We're, we're pioneering a, just a very simple little book that will be uh, a simple cardboard cover and about 30 to 60 pages uh, uh, in material of newspaper print that's printed. And we're working with uh, publishers and newspapers to create a, a very inexpensive uh, item that we can ship around the world electronically in local newspapers around the world can print it and put it in little free libraries and use it for uh, uh, communities. And so one of the things I was hoping to do with you is pioneer it with you, uh, hopefully in Pakistan, and we would try modeling this with Pakistani newspapers and some funding uh, from various sources to create these small almost booklets of, of content that, that are easily to read and really promote literacy and promote building literacy throughout uh, the country. So that is something that I'd love to work with you and uh, see if we can make that successful along with the little free libraries and the mobile little free libraries. Um, Cause we believe that uh, everybody has a right to read. And we believe that um, 
wherever we shall gather, there shall be books. And, and we're hoping to work with communities around the world to make that a reality. So um, suppose you know, how would these books be distributed and what do you want these books to do? Well, it's, it's not a matter of what I want these books to do, but it's a matter of utilizing this concept with newspapers around the world to create these little mini books to do what the community needs it to do wherever they're from. And uh, what we're looking at it is as a means and a ways to not only teach literacy and encourage reading, but to set up a, a great modeling uh, throughout a country of, of people reading and reading to each other. For instance, the mobile libraries that we talked about, the police, not it, it, very simple. Not only do we want to see it in the police, but we want to see it in buses and we want to see it in the Philippines. They have jeepneys and hospitals and waiting rooms. Wherever people shall gather, there shall be books. And we're trying to work on ways to make that happen on a global basis in partnership with some of our finest partners like uh, Books for Africa. Did I lose you there, sir? Are you still hanging out? I've got a gray screen right now. But uh, anyway, the, the I think the key to the Little Free Library situation is that Little Free Libraries are really designed to be anywhere and be by used by any community. And it's something that's uniquely out your front door and across the globe. I lost you there a bit. Are we okay? Yes, I went to look for my booklets, and I um, I have created three booklets so far, and these are small little booklets which I wanted to show you. Um, I also used to run a newspaper, right? So I was looking for that. Uh, so this is another a local stuff. Yes, uh, hi. So can you hear me? I can perfect. Okay. So, but I couldn't find the so far, and uh, the cost of a published, say, fifty pages, is around twenty-five cents with the hard with the cover uh, in Pakistan, and to produce something like a newspaper like this, uh, uh, which can have content, is around ten cents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The difference is my family uh, has been in paper business, so I really, I do understand how the paper large printing press also in Pakistan. So, um, but I still don't know how will it be distributed and how will it different the publishing model. What is the content which you're trying to promote or develop? For instance, where we're, we're going to looking to pioneer it in the Philippines, what we would be doing is they would have local content, local folklore stories um, uh, that would be written by the populace. And also what we would be able to do is we'd be able to get some content from here in the States. But mostly our, our goal is to have it to be in local languages and local content as much as possible. And uh, we are going but to uh, beta test it this year. In the Philippines, I'd love to see if we could beta test it in in um, uh, Pakistan, and also uh, on the distribution side. In the Philippines, we've got an arrangement with actually the army itself to distribute books for us, and and so we we can use that as a methodology to make it happen. So in every country, there's a publishing house. There are printing services because printing has been around for a long, long time. It's available. Um, how can, what, what exactly would you be looking for in somebody to approach you and say, okay, how do we work together? Um, what I would like to do is mock up content and, and mock up a couple of uh, uh, designs and books that booklets. And I would like to see if we could bring it to market, get funding for it from the supporters I'm talking to and make it happen. You know, just set up some dry runs almost and, and try to expand it from there. So what stops you from going today and taking a, a I mean, you, if you want to local have the local content, 
why don't you just go to the market and buy them? I, I can't afford them myself. You know, what I'm trying to do is set up a, a network that, that funds these, distributes them, and, and, and makes it economically pe- compelling, not only for the, uh, on this side, but also for the newspaper printer on the other side. Would the, these, these would also have advertising in it to help support it. Okay. So how can we help? What, 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 what's the next step from, from what can I do for you exactly? What would be, what, what can I do? What I, a, I'll send you some uh, general overall thoughts on it. B, I'll send you kind of a mock-up of what I think it looks like. And then I would like to test run and see if we could figure out the logistics. I have a, a good partner team in the Philippines that would be willing to do it. And I would love to see if we could do kind of a dry run uh, uh, model in Pakistan, see if we can make it work there. I also have friends in, in Africa that are will, that are interested in looking at this. Okay. Okay. Um, can I ask why you want to do it and not focus on the library project? Itself? Oh, the, the, the library is, is absolutely in the equation, and the Little Free Library is, is important. It's a, a distribution space for, for books and content. And one of the problems that we find is like when I'm working with the Philippines and in the Philippine school systems, I can develop a system that gets them American books in English, but but what I hear from them is a big cry that it's in the local language and local stories. And I'm trying to figure out how to make that work, you know, without without uh, it being an extreme expense to us that we can't afford. So I'm trying to make it affordable, try to use something, uh, the, the newspapers to get them to uh, utilize their presses, which hopefully they have some space for us and uh, make it work that way. And also I'm trying to make it so that when it's on uh, uh, buses and trains and so on in the community, it's not something that's just um, ripped off and sold in the marketplace, but it's something that's passed about because it's not, it's 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 a little better than a newspaper, but not as good as a book. And I'm hoping that that format will enable people to share them, use them and pass them around. Because we realize that the books that we put out just run out of the little free libraries and they're sold in the local markets and they don't get to the people that need them the most. So we're trying to figure out not only how to get the books that um, are needed the most to the people that need them the most, but in the appropriate contents, contents, language, and um, stories about them. You know, um, does that does that make sense to you? No? He shakes his head. Tell that- me, tell me. Tell me where you struggle with the idea. I think um, what you are doing is so unique. It's like mm-hmm. you're, you're, it's like you're Krispy Kreme. I don't know if you've been into one, and you're trying. Well, I know Krispy Kreme, but I, I uh, yeah. Okay, it's like you're McDonald's, and you're saying I want to become Krispy Kreme because it's really important for people to have a donut after their McDonald's. So it's like mixing two things up to me. Um, I have okay. done. In my experience, um, I think, for example, you are at 75,000 uh, libraries and you want to get at 25 million. If I was you, I would focus on how do I get to a million libraries. Forget about the books disappearing. Forget about the books. Forget about everything else because you already have a phenomenal model. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. doing such a beautiful thing that I personally feel that you don't have to worry about the books disappearing or books going away or publishing the book because it's a totally different model. There are thousands of publishers in the world uh, who are already publishing. And uh, from what, as an entrepreneur, I always struggle with how can I make my business innovative? How can I, how can I bring niche? How can I bring something new to my business so that it becomes sexy, so that it becomes amazing, so that, and also, if you're an entrepreneur, so for example, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm constantly bombarded with new ideas and not focus on my core business. So, and that's my constant struggle. So, and when I talk to other entrepreneurs, I see similar problems that they all want to start something new. And I, of course, don't understand your business as much as you do, but um, I personally feel that if, if your target is 25 million, boxes and we have 75,000 we should talk about we should not even talk about anything else we should just talk about 
how do we take it from because it has worked so far at 75 right right how do we tip it and it becomes 7.5 million in the next 5 years how do we do that not even worry about the books or literacy because that's not our job that's somebody else's problem somebody else will come in another thought bowl will be born in the world and say hey there's a box but there's no books in it so i need to fix out that problem so if i was you i wouldn't i wouldn't touch anything i would focus on this 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 and the, how do i make my library into a million books and not publish and not do anything unless i have a million boxes and then i i give away my not for profit to somebody else and start up a new venture okay we have a new problem you want to solve and that's what i would do i would see how i would take again i'm not you please don't take no 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 you know you know we are trying to and you're you know there's an old saying uh you chase a rabbit you may catch it you chase two you'll catch neither you know i mean i i i get that and and i actually uh totally understand i have a hundred different ideas and and uh it's hard to uh, uh stay down and stay focused on them cuz there's always more and more things that i'm building out like our mobile little libraries and you know uh uh we're and we're always concerned about uh content and books and availability and we try to explore that but we ourselves cannot be the ones that stock the little free libraries as you know we just it, logistically that would just and financially cripple us um um I just met you it's not my place to tell you what you have to do and and what not to do i don't want to step on your toes or to tell you what you should do but i'm just sharing i didn't understand it um and i have been trying to solve a lot of problems through entrepreneurship and so have you but what i miss is that i wish that the free library had an option where i could pay 10 uh and put my postcard there or put my business card on the side because both of the sides are empty i would mm-hmm. learn i would say how do i monetize and make it into a business where it self sustains it and nobody the the owner of the house has an incentive that that woman gets free cable which is 100 dollar free internet which is you know again 50 to 100 dollars just because i have a free library in my yard now all of a sudden i invested the 100 dollars i got it invested but now I'm getting fifty dollars or a month or hundred dollars a month back. It's not a lot of money. It's not about the money. It's about that there is a business around it, and um, there is a you know there is a public. For example, the one of the biggest problems I found in the third world countries or the underdeveloped countries is there is no notice board. Mm-hmm. There is you know there is no library, but there is also no neighborhood board which you can find in a, in a Starbucks or a Walmart or right, in a right. store. which is where people gather and and see uh, another thing i notice is that in a lot of places there is no place for reading newspaper right so, right as you have seen in some countries they put up a newspaper on the bus stop and you can go and read the newspaper so the little free library has three sides which are empty how do i put in a newspaper there every day where somehow you know people will come in and read that newspaper that's the kind of ideas which i would think of how do i get from 75000 to a million boxes i would not want to focus on anything else and anything else unless that goal is done and that's the biggest challenge is that as an entrepreneur which i deal with is how do i stop these ideas from coming into my head because they're like oh it's so exciting i can fix this problem but you know as you said you end up trying to chase two rats and you end up losing both of the rabbits so um i get that and and by the way i will be sending you uh drawings and of we have one coming out within 60 days that has a removable bulletin board on it and so uh you are able to uh put whatever signs you want up we've had them that have chalkboards on the side where people can write all over them and we've also had uh ones that were the front in the plexiglass uh we have a slot about uh this high uh, about a half inch deep where people put brochures and information and and about sharing in the community so there is a a variety of of that and and you actually uh, hit core uh, problem with entrepreneurs and creative folks is they can't stop creating 
and 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 sometimes when they have that good idea, I noticed on your uh, Facebook page you have 38 jobs, and and if that's a that's the biggest sign I've ever seen of somebody that can't stop creating. And I understand. Um, but we are always uh, exploring ideas that, that access to books works for our patrons because the little free libraries are book exchanges. And the vast majority of times and in, in, in how it works really is there is a steward that's in charge of the little free library who oversees the little free library. And I, I don't know if I lost you or, or not, sir. Sure. Um, but uh, I will continue. The steward oversees the library and takes care of it and makes sure that they find books. And yeah. so um, that's uh, uh, the best way to make it happen. So I will wind up. I guess it's about 1.15 my time, and I have to continue on to an appointment, and we will catch up later, okay? Thanks a lot, and thanks for listening, and we'll talk soon. Thank you, Todd. Uh, so this was Todd, and uh, Todd is the amazing man who has created the uh, the free library concept, uh, my little free library. You can go to their website and order a box. You can also build your own free library, and then you can uh, go ahead and um, uh, build one for yourself. And as Todd was saying, he's looking for publishers, He's looking for newspaper people. If you know any of those people, you can contact him and uh, start this project in Pakistan or wherever in the world you are. He's very excited about doing this, and I'm very, very uh, deeply honored that he took the time and uh, talked with me on this on such a sp uh, small notice. And um, uh, I am very hopeful that he will succeed with his idea. Thank you so much for all for watching. Do share the video. And if you haven't got a free uh, the library yet in your area, set one up.